Okay, welcome back everybody. I sure wish this was in, being done in person, but um, with these strange circumstances, um, I'm just glad that I'm going to be able to help you um, in some way. All right, I plan on recording all the classes and then making myself available online for any of you that have questions. But I can say, um, and I don't remember if you guys remember me telling you this, but we had finished all of the pre-algebra lessons. So right now, we are just going to concentrate on getting Algebra 1, Chapters 1, 2, and 3 completed before the end of the year. All right, so that's a little ambitious, but I think we can do it, especially because um, Chapter 1 is pretty much a review. And you can see right now, as we go through the first lesson, um, that it is a review. All right, so I really want you to concentrate for me, um, and I really... Uh, once you're doing a good job on all of this work and certainly if you have any questions you can let me know but before we get started I'd like to say a little prayer for everybody because I miss you guys I miss speaking in chapel all right and I hope everybody's doing well but um, I'd like to always open with a prayer and I pray for health and healing for you and your family may God heal all of your sickness and free you from your burdens he is our healer and deliverer as he is well able. Amen. Alright, now let's go ahead and get started. Um, what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you how simple it is because um, section 1, 1 and 1, 2 I'll have demonstrated here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go kind of to the IXL and you're going to kind of do the IXL that match up with this uh, lesson. Alright, so let's go ahead uh, and make sure you downloaded this and put it in your uh, notability and then what we're doing is we're just going to go through this together and then you'll go to your IXL all right you'll submit this to me and I'll look over it make sure that you're doing your class notes and then I'll give you a grade for all of that all right so here we go guys you'll see it's we've already done this all right so it's nothing new all right so a number decreased by 8 remember we're just writing an algebra expression so remember they're talking about a number that's our variable so it's just n minus 8 and I'm sure everybody knows that all right a number divided by 8 would be n now we're always using fractions now not the division symbol all right so I want you to write n over 8 as a fraction all right number 3 a number squared so that would be n squared all right now, does it doesn't matter what letter you use? Nope, I don't care if you use A, B, C, D. Whatever letter you want to choose is fine with me. All right, now 4 times the number, we all know. We can just write 4N. There's no, it's not necessary to put a dot there. We don't write 4 times N anymore because the time symbol looks like a variable. X, so we're just going to leave it as 4N. All right. Same thing now, a number divided by 6. Again, we write it as a fraction, n divided by 6. Now, don't forget sum in math. All right, sum in math means add. So we're adding 9 and a number. All right. Now, we're starting to get to a little trickier ones. All right. Now, remember, 3 less than. We've talked about this a bunch. So if you forgot, I understand. 3 is what you're subtracting. You're not going 3 minus. So when you say 3 less than, you mean minus 3, okay? And you're subtracting 3 from what? From 5 times a number. So that would be 5n minus 3. All right, I wish everybody would highlight that. If you're having any issues or if you kind of forgot, I want that to be uh, an important really super important problem. Alright, so make sure you take a close look at that. Alright, now the next thing I want you to remember is twice means two times and then also there's a sum. So uh, seven months ago when we first started doing this I reminded you that when there's two operations in a row multiplying and adding that creates a parenthesis. So we would say twice the sum of 15 
and a number. All right. So you're multiplying the sum by two. That's what that means. So you're not uh, just multiplying 15 by two. You're actually multiplying that sum by two. So do me a favor now. Make sure you look over number eight as well. All right. And because there's two operations in a row, that's your signal that you need parentheses. All right, number nine, one half the square of b. All right, so one half b squared. All right, now some people made a mistake on this. They weren't sure what holds the one half and the b squared together. It's an understood multiplication. All right, so when somebody says one half the square of b, you can write it as one half times b squared. You could also write, and here's where I want you to be smart, you could also say b squared over 2. All right, that means exactly the same, and you need to know that. All right, so that's another good one to highlight. Uh-oh, wrong one. All right, number 9 is a good one. All right, now let's take a look at number 7. All right, now again, 7 more than. All right, you're not adding... Or you're not taking 7 plus something, you're adding 7. So again, when you get started on this, there would be a plus 7. All right? Now remember, more than or less than, the order is changed. All right? Now, product again means what? Product means you're multiplying. Well, what two things are you multiplying? You're multiplying 6 and a number. So that would be 6n plus 7. All right? Now, number 11, all right, number 11, we're doing 30 increased, all right? So now it doesn't switch because you're taking the number 30 and you're increasing it by, by what? By three times something. Three times what? The square of a number. So how do I do the square of a number again? We just do n squared. All right, so please, I feel like number 11 is a good one to review also. All right, definitely. All right, so please review with your uh, notes. All right, review yourself. Make sure you understood 7, 8, 9, and 11. And if there is ever a problem, you can just uh, let me know when I get online. All right, now that was section 1-1. One, one. I told you, very simple. All right, translating uh, variable expressions. All right, now number 2 is order of operation. All right, now I'm sure everybody remembers order of operations, P, E, M, D, A, S. Parentheses, E stands for exponents, and then uh, multiply and divide. Now remember, multiply, divide in order from left to right. All right, you always read numbers left to right. Adding and subtracting from what? Left to right. All right, so you've got to keep that in mind. So most people, when they see PEMDAS, they think multiplying comes before dividing, and that is not true. You always read from left to right. All right, so let's knock out section 1.2 and call it a day. All right, here we go. 8 squared. All right, obviously, we all know that's going to be 64. And again, just to review, that just means 8 times 8. All right? Number 2, 3 to the 4th power. Again, I would want you to know that's obviously 81. But if you forgot, remember that's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's 9. That's 9. That's how I got the 81. All right? Here we go. Number three, again, practicing our powers, five cubed, five times five times five. Of course, that's 125, all right? Again, 25 times five. I always tell kids to think in terms of quarters. If you have five quarters, you have 125, all right? So here we go with four. Again, another uh, exponent, three times three times three. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. All right, number five, we have to do the parentheses first. 
So we're doing 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 times 7 is 63. All right. This should be pretty easy. The numbers are small enough. You don't have to use your calculator. I don't want you to use your calculator. All right. So you've got to practice your mental math and make sure you're good. All right. Let's do 6. Again, you're doing your parentheses. 9 minus 2 is 7. 7 times 3 is 21. All right. Now over here is where some people start to make mistakes because they just start grabbing numbers. Remember, you're not allowed to do that. You have to do the multiplication before you do the addition. So that's 4 plus 18, which is 22. All right. Now question number 8. We need to do 2 times 2 first. So it would be 12 plus 4, which is 16. All right. Number 9. Again, we've got to do our parentheses, which means we've got to do that first. So that'd be 8 times 5 plus 1. Then you have to do your multiplication. 40 plus 1, 41. All right, let's check out number 10. All right, again, we're doing our parentheses. 9 plus 4 times 4. 9 plus 16, which is 25. All right. So I told you guys, very easy, no problems at all, all right? A little bit harder as we move down the page. Let's do the multiplication first. So that'd be 30 minus 20 plus 2. And then we're doing it in order. 30 minus 20 is 10 plus 2 equals 12. All right, now look at number 12. All right, here we go. 10 plus 12 plus 4, 22 plus 4, 26. All right? Easy. I told you guys it's going to be very easy for us. All right? Let's look at 13. Okay, so now we got to be careful. I want to do the exponents first. So we say 3 squared is 9. Now here's where you have to be careful. Next thing you have to do is the division. So you have to do 14 divided by 7, which is 2, times 5 minus 9. So 10 minus 9 equals 1. All right. Now, let's take a look at 14. All right, now we've got brackets. We've got parentheses. So remember, the rule is always go to the innermost parentheses, the most inside. All right, so the first thing we'd have to do is 10 minus 2. We'd make that an 8. So now it's 4. 30 minus 8 times 3. Now we have to do the multiplication because that's inside the bracket. 4, 30 minus 24. And then that's the same as 4 times 6, which is, of course, 24. All right. So 14, I'd say, probably is the hardest one we've done so far, but that shouldn't be a big deal for you. All right, let's take a look at 15 now. All right, so again, we're going to start with the inside of the parentheses. 6 minus 1 is 5, so 5 plus 30 minus 5 squared. 5 plus, now we have to do the 5 squared first, 30 minus 25. And then, of course, that's just 5 plus 5, which equals 10. All right, again, this is a nice little review. Small numbers, no reason to use a calculator. Plus, if you use a calculator, you have to do all the parentheses. Sometimes you can make an easy mistake on that. All right, so let's take a look at 16 now. 2 bracket 12 plus. Again, we're going to start with 5 minus 2. That's going to be 3 squared. So 2 and then 12 plus 9. 2 times 21, and that's going to be what? It's going to be 42. All right, so I told you, order of operation, very, very, very simple. I'm going to shrink this down just so it doesn't run into my next part of my lesson. All right, now over here we're just making the substitutions. All right, so what I want to do is um, you just keep in mind that x is always 6, y is always 8, and z is always 3. All right, 
So now we just come over here and we do our substitution. So we would say x, which is 6, times 8 plus 3, 48 plus 3, 51. Nothing to it. Number 18, y times z. So that would be 8 times 3 minus 6. 24 minus 6 equals 18. Very nice. Very nice. All right. 19, now we have to do 2 times 6 plus 3 times 8 minus 3. 12 plus 24 minus 3, 36 minus 3, 33. Okay? So again, we're just doing order of operation when we're doing substitution. Okay? Now, over here at number 20, 2, open parentheses, 6 plus 3 minus 8 equals 2 times 9 minus 8. 18 minus 8, which is what? 10. Okay? So again, simply following the uh, order of operations. Now notice here I did 6 plus 3 first. All right, I didn't distribute the 2 there. Just go ahead and simplify your numbers. All right? Here we go for number 21 now. 5 times 3 plus 8 minus 6. 15 plus 2 equals 17. Now notice, does it really matter if I did 8 minus 6 first and then went back and did 5 minus 3? No, because they were technically what? Individual problems. That's just 5 times 3, and that's just 8 minus 6, and then you're adding them. So again, technically it doesn't matter. All right, you just have to be careful. All right, let's look at 22 now. All right, so 22 is... 5 times 6 minus 8 plus 2 times 3. All right, you got to be careful here. 30 minus, all right, now inside here, 2 times 3 is 6, all right? So we have to do 8 plus 6. So that's going to be 30 minus 14, which of course is 16, all right? All right, hopefully you're feeling good about this. All right, let's look at 23 now. All right, so 23, I have 6 squared plus 8 squared minus 10 times 3. All right, so that's going to be 6 squared, which is 36, plus 8 squared, which is 64, and then minus 30. All right. Now when you add 100 minus 30, all right, and 100 minus 30 is 70. Okay, sorry for the delay here. All right, so I have 3 cubed plus 8 squared minus 4 times 6. All right, so now I have 3 cubed, which is 27, plus 8 squared, which is 64, minus 24. All right, so now I have 27 plus 40, which is 67. All right, so that was a tricky one, so I want everybody to make sure they go back and look that one over. All right, number 25, here we go. 8 plus 6 times 3 divided by 2, 8 plus 18 divided by 2. Now again, this is a rare case where you have to do the numerator before you do the denominator. So that's 26 divided by 2, which is equal to 13. All right. Now what I want to do is for question number 26, we want to go 3 times 8 plus 6 squared divided by 3. Okay, so now we have 24 plus 36 divided by 3. So now we have 
60 divided by 3, which is equal to 20. All right. So again, I think that's it. All right, for section 1, 1 and 1, 2. Now, the, the IXL part, you have to go to Algebra 1 now. All right. These correspond with the information that we just did. All right. So I want you to go to Algebra 1, I1, score of 90, B2, and B3, score of 90. All right, this one's a little bit out of order. All right, I was a little confused about that, but I just want you to go to I1, B2, B3. Get those up to a 90, and then that'll mean you're pretty strong. All right, so I hope to be back in school soon, but until now, uh, or until then, um, I hope everybody stays safe. All right, take care of yourself, and I'll be online soon so you can answer questions if necessary. Have a good day.